I am David Beck, and this is the second video of Testyland. Oh, yes it is. Now, uh, we had a bit of a problem, actually, with Testyland. Um, essentially, what went wrong, just so you can watch this, is I didn't build enough houses quickly enough. So, there were people who wanted to have kids, but they were sort of living with their parents. And, essentially, this kind of got so bad, they got too old to have kids. Um, I'm not sure what the cutoff age is, but I think it's about 40 or 50 or something. <laughs> Blimey, I really was neglectful, like, wasn't I? Anyhow, they didn't have enough kids, so the village population started to shrink and they, people started to die. It's a very, very difficult life being a little tiny worker in this world. And uh, they were also very unhappy. Now, one of the reasons they were unhappy was because they didn't have one of these, a cemetery. Now, when somebody dies, obviously it causes a great deal of unhappiness, and unhappy people don't have kids, which is bad, especially if you're trying to grow your population. So, the people were too unhappy, they didn't have kids, they didn't have enough houses, so the population has fallen to 11 people, um, which isn't very big at all, as you might imagine. I did build my trading posts, and they were working quite well. But, unfortunately, because my population has fallen to 11 people, two children and one person in school, it's um it's not really worth carrying on with, so... Okay, I thought that we could very briefly go through the buildings in a bit more of a systematic way. Um, so houses, you've got your basic wooden house and you've got your stone house. The advantage of the stone house is that it uses far less firewood. I'm not sure what the ratio is, but I think it's one less than half of what the stone wooden house uses. So it's really worth having stone houses if you can afford them. Two reasons why you might want a wooden house, for example, are that a wooden house is much cheaper to build, it's quicker to build, well, obviously using less resources, so you can actually build houses a lot more quickly, as I have done here, to try to save my terrible little dwindling village. But it was too late, alas. I've got nine population, it'll soon shrink to perhaps nothing, who knows. Um, what else can we do? Okay, let's move on to the roads. It's only really worth having stone roads once you've got a good supply of stone coming in from the trade route. It's not really worth it, otherwise <clears throat> the advantage isn't really big enough to justify the cost. But it is if you've got plenty of stone, which you will have later on if you make a successful economy. Talking of stone and iron, I don't actually use quarries or uh, or mines. I don't think it's really worth it. There just uh, isn't really... I mean, a lot of people die sort of down the mine, down the quarry, and it's like so much easier just to import the goods. So, how do you import goods? Well, you put firewood in, or whatever resource you want. Firewood's good because, obviously, um, you get one log, it goes into one of these, which is a woodcutter, and gets turned into four firewood. A firewood is typically worth four, so you're basically turning logs, which are worth two, into four firewood, which are worth four each, respectively. So, yeah, that's an um, absolutely wonderful ratio, which is great. I've also got... Well, you can talk about Town Hall. Town Hall, I'm not going to build it now, but it's fantastic later on for sort of monitoring what's going on, what's stored where. Um, you can also look at your four food groups, which is, of course, um, grains, fruit, vegetables, and protein. And you can make sure that you've got enough of all four of them. You also get immigrants who might want to move to your town. They're usually worth taking in, although they sometimes carry disease. So you've just got to watch out for that. You've also got your church, which is very useful, and your graveyard. I've already mentioned my graveyard, which, you know, is very effective at keeping people happy. Um, churches, again, just make people happier, so a happy person will have more kids. So, yeah, it's great. I guess they perform well, marriages too. It's not really a game mechanic, but I guess they would in real life. Um, so, as you might have noticed, we've got some lovely little sheep here. Uh, there's two people working on this pasture, so, well, there's one, but there should be two, and I think it's fairly efficient. You get meat, you get wool. Now, 
I might have previously explained this, but it's really worth. Well, if you want warm coats which wear out a lot more slowly than conventional coats, um, you need three cow pens to one sheep pen, basically. That's the ratio I always use. And the reason is really obvious. You don't need to kill a sheep in order to harvest the wool, but you do need to kill a cow to get the leather. So, obviously, it's going to be a lot more efficient if you have sheep, which I do, um, than cows. So, yeah, we could talk about fish very briefly. I don't actually have a fishing thing here, but if you put a fishing thingy what's it, on a river, then it's a lot less efficient than if you actually have it on a pond, or a large pond, rather. So, I'm going to get a lot less fish from here than I would if I stuck it downstream or perhaps upstream on a large pool. So that's something to bear in mind. I don't typically use fish um, that much because even though it looks kind of good statistically, I don't find that you actually get that much fish, um, which is kind of annoying. So herbs. If you're missing one of the four food groups, which you might be, then people can eat herbs and that kind of substitutes. Um, for one of the food groups. So, for example, if they don't have any protein, they could eat herbs. They wouldn't get sick and they stay healthy. I've already covered mines and quarries. They're not worth it, are they? Nope. Sorry, I've got a list written down on a piece of paper. I never use mines and quarries. Um, so I should point out, this is a planned economy, so you do actually need to plan what each area is for. So... I've gone for firewood here because firewood's pretty useful. Again, it's more efficient to cut down all the firewood and then to have one of these buildings replenish it. But I, I just like to leave the firewood alone, to be honest. As long as I've got a good enough supply coming in, I just kind of leave them to do whatever they want. And they produce a constant flow of wood as well as food from the gatherer's hut. So, again, I think that's great. You know, you've got a pretty much endless source of food here. Again, um, agriculture is pretty good, and I should remind you it's 12 across, 10 down, that's what I always use. But the cost of problem is, you get one big load a year from these, or you get none from these because nobody's working on these fields, but yeah, you get one big load essentially. Whereas the uh, Gavris Hut is more constant, so, you know, it's, it's a bit easier to use Gavris Hut if I'm honest. And I, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned one or two things. If you've got any more questions, please leave them in the comments. And 